fine. So it's usually at 18 months, starting at 18 months and 24 months for the uh, anterior fentanyl, all right? So the anterior fentanyl is usually in 24 months and 18 months in the posterior fentanyl. Okay? Um, the name of the condition where the cranial sutures do not ossify or do not fuse, this is called craniosynostosis, and obviously this can lead to significant increase of the intracranial pressure and can affect the, all the brain functions, basically. Age to develop mastoid bone, and it's two years, all right? It's two years for age of development. So if you remember, we mentioned 18 months, and we mentioned uh, two years as well. So 18 months is basically the um, fontanels uh, and, uh, or, or the sutures, and 24 is the anterior fontanel, and also the um, uh, mastoid process will complete or well, um, uh, rich full development. So diploic veins. So these are veins which which um, drain the bone between the inner and outer cortex or inner and outer table of the skull. If we take a section of the skull, we'll find that there is an outer table and also an inner table as well. So the bone between it will have lots of diploic veins that are being drained into the superior sagittal sinus, which is literally just below. The, um, um, uh, the inner table of the skull. The terion. The terion is, is normally formed by the frontal bone, and then you have the temporal bone as well, coming in here, and you have the um, uh, sphenoid bone uh, in addition to the uh, parietal bone as well. So parietal, frontal, and temporal, and the sphenoid bone form the terion. The terion is quite an important structure, which represents multiple clinical approaches for many different surgery, including the aneurysm surgery, which is called the terional approach, right? The terional approach. And also, it's an important structure because the middle meningeal artery passes in the inner side of the terion. So, any injury to the side of the head can lead to an epidural or an extradural hematoma. So, these are the clinical significance. If you do a, 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 a sort of a, a terional approach, or any approach or any bare hole or over the terion uh, area, it will pass uh, through uh, certain structures, starting by all the scalp layer, and all the scalp layer. But notice that on this side, we have the temporalis muscle as well. So instead of loose connective tissue, we're going to replace this by temporalis muscle. And you have a skin, you have connective tissue, you have the aponeurosis, and you have the pericranium and in between the temporalis muscle and its sheath as well. The source of subdural hematoma, subdural hematoma usually, usually um, the source of the bridging vein. So for example, if we have here, this is the bone and um, below the bone or very adherent to the bone, you will have the dura, just very adherent to it. And this is the subdural space. This is also the arachnoid matter. You have some bridging veins connecting between uh, this, uh, the sinus here, and down there. So this is a bridging vein. When the brain starts to shrink in size, uh, this bridging vein will stretch and might cause some sort of bleeding in this area, which is called subdural hematoma, uh, or even stripper veins, which will be found on the wall of the arachnoid matter on this side. So it could be stripper veins or the um, bridging veins as well. Stylo process muscles attached to it. So we'll all obviously start by stylo. And you have to the pharynx, so stylopharyngeus muscle, and to the tongue, so styloglossus muscle, and to the higher bone, stylohyoid muscles. So you have three muscles attached to the styloid process. So identify the following structures. So you have here, this is the lateral x-ray, and you have some sort of openings in these x-rays that a little bit dark means it's containing some air. And, um, and we basically name them based on where they are. So you have here, this is the frontal bone, so that is going to be the frontal, and it's a, a cavity containing air, so that would be frontal sinus, okay? And here, this is the ethmoid bone, so this is the ethmoid sinus, and this is the maxillary bone, so that will be the maxillary uh, sinus as well, okay? And moving to this one, so that will be the sphenoid sinus on the other side, okay? So you have multiple structures in here, and uh, all of them are sinuses because they are cavities containing air. Um, this is maxillary, this is ethmoid, and this is frontal sinus, and finally this is a sphenoid uh, sinus.